I'm Yujiro Sato. I'm a mature, dull high school sophomore. Wait, Jiro, walking to school by yourself? Don't ask the obvious. Well, of course you are. You don't have a girlfriend, right, Jiro? In this case, you should be making fun of the fact that I don't have any friends. Why are they asking if you have a girlfriend? Because I feel sorry for you because you're living a lonely high school life. That doesn't answer the question. I don't have a choice. You want me to be your girlfriend then? Ugh, she's being a pain again. She's Mikage Toto. She's my classmate. She's a good looking and sociable girl, so she's the center of the class. She's what's commonly known as a popular girl. She's popular among boys and girls. But I don't really like her. She's always making fun of me like this. I've been letting it slide lately, but it's stressing me out to be nagged every day. So I came up with an idea. Reading books. That's why you can't get a girlfriend. Uh. Fine, I'll sit and talk to you. I actually have a girlfriend. Huh? Come on, don't be stubborn. But I really do. How can you have a girl in your life? Don't lie to me. I'll feel bad for you again. It's true. You want to meet her? Y you're kidding, right? So if you think I'm lying, go ahead and see for yourself. I'll call her after school. What? I'll end this painful entanglement with her today, I swear it. Yujiro, you understand, don't you? Yeah, ice cream. I want Nanakuma Daz. Okay, okay. Uh, this is... Yes, this is Yujiro's girlfriend. Are you one of his classmates? Thanks for being friends with Yujiro. He's a bit brisk, twisted, and a bit careless, but please be nice to him. Can't you put that a little better? <laughs> because it's true, isn't it? Well, that's what makes you so cute. The cheerful girl in front of me is my girlfriend. No, she's my sister, Hiyori. I bribed her with ice cream to pretend to be my girlfriend. Are you serious? You're standing in front of her. It's undeniably true. That's right. I'm the only girlfriend in the world. We're in love. Uh. Ah, oh, Yujiro, you get so embarrassed. This isn't something you're supposed to show off too much. It can't be. It can't be. Jiro having a girlfriend? Oh, she's gone. Ah, uh, you went too far, sis. You didn't have to hug me. I like my work to be overdone. I mean, was that okay? I think she likes you, Yujiro. Of course not! She's just sad because there are fewer people to make fun of. At any rate, from the look of things, Toto won't be bothering me anymore. I'm relieved that I'm finally free of her getting involved with me. She didn't come today, too. Toto hasn't come to school since that day. It's been four days since she's been absent. Um, Sato, you were on day duty today, right? Yes, that's right. I got a stack of Toto's prints. Deliver them to her, will you? W why me? You're on duty today, right? And I'm aware that her house is on the way to yours. Uh, huh. Yes. Hey. What? <laughs> why are you here, Hijiro? The teacher told me to give you the papers. I'm here for that. I, I see. All right, take care. Wait a second. I have to go. My girlfriend's waiting for me. That may not be very nice to someone with a cold, but no. She's put me through a lot of discomfort in the past. This much should be okay. I left without looking back. Why me again? I don't know who gave her my contact information, but I got a call from Toto saying, please come to my house just one more time. I was going to stand her up, but my homeroom keeper asked me to deliver some papers again, so I reluctantly visited her house. She asks me to enter the house without ringing the doorbell. Is she so sick that she can't move from her bed? Thinking this, I knocked and opened the door to her room where she was waiting. <sighs> Whoa, what the hell are you wearing? Forgive me. Forgive me. Don't dislike me. Go out with me. What? I couldn't understand the situation. I'll do anything. Just get dressed. Please, just get dressed. Um, what you just said? I like you, Jiro. Huh? But you made fun of me so many times before. 
That's the only way I could communicate with you. It's impossible to ask you out. It seems that my sister was right. I'm so baffled by this unexpected turn of events. But you have a girlfriend, don't you? I didn't think you had a girlfriend. It's such a pretty one at that. H hey, can it be me? No, uh, about that. If not, I'm okay with being the second one. That's fine, too. Ah, uh, I don't have a girlfriend. You don't? The person you met last time was my sister. I told her the truth. That's what it is. I had my sister play the role of my girlfriend because you kept getting involved with me. It was to keep Toto quiet. I see. I'm not going to apologize. It all started with you. Thank goodness! So Chiro's single then. Hey, what are you- oh, Sorry, I can't believe I did that. I was just so relieved that I just- You make fun of the guy you like and then you beg to him naked. You're a mess, Toto! Oh, don't tell me everything. You're embarrassing me. H hey, I know you don't like me right now, but can you give me a chance to redeem myself? Huh? Starting tomorrow. No, I'll be honest about my feelings from today. Toto said this with a face as if she had made up her mind. <laughs> Did something happen today? No, it's more like I'm having a crisis because there's so little going on in my high school life. I envy you having fun, sis. Yujiro's usually quiet, but you talk a lot when you're lying. So, what happened? I'm curious. Uh, I told her about the incident at Toto's house. I was right! Looks like it. So, how are you going to respond? There's nothing to respond. I have a negative image of her from everything she's done. It's like a typical romance manga, starting with a negative image. But as he spends time with her... Come on! She must have low self-esteem. No, isn't it the opposite? She's a typical egocentric, self-loving person. You can't judge a person by their looks or where they stand. Just because you look gorgeous and stand out in class doesn't mean you have high self-esteem or that you're cheerful. If she was confident in herself, she wouldn't do things in a roundabout way and just ask you out, right? You're right. She must be a sensitive girl. Why don't you make an effort to get to know her instead of immediately judging her, saying you don't like her? My sister has a point. I certainly don't know much about her. I have no reason to reject her because of what I learned about why she was getting involved with me like that in the past. Besides, I'm usually playing it cool, but that doesn't mean I'm not interested in romance. Since she likes me so much, I should at least face her head on. Uh. Huh? Morning, Jiro. Uh, good morning. Why are you so spaced out? You cut your hair, huh? As a sign of remorse. If it's for remorse, shouldn't you have shaved your head then? I thought about that, but it wouldn't look good. You actually thought about it? I said it as a joke, but... Hey, um, does this look okay on me? Well, it looks good. I, I see. Well, that's what I thought you'd say. Toto looked anxious the whole time until I said that. I saw her expression and I thought it was cute, but at the same time, I had a funny feeling that she's a human being after all, too. Even though she's in a position envied by others, behind her smile, she is scared and anxious about something. I'm curious to get to know her a little bit better. I've never been on a family restaurant date with Jiro. I bet I'm the only one who would do this with you, right? I don't know about that. Uh, sorry, I said something unnecessary again. D do you dislike me? <laughs> I don't care. You don't have to be so sensitive. <sighs> my involvement with her increased day by day. My sister was right. And now I'm glad I made the effort to get to know her. She's sensitive. She's kind of the elderly and... Sometimes she's a total idiot. I got to know her in so many ways. I'm a simpler person than I thought, and little by little, I was attracted to her. One day during these days, an incident occurred. He looked so mature, but he was a beast. Poor Toto-san. He might make a move on you too, you know. Ew. Huh, that's a lot of trouble. 
People thought I was a womanizer. Someone probably saw me when I asked my sister to play the role of my girlfriend. I've been spending a lot of time with Toto lately, too. Hey, Jiro, after school today. My bad. Hmm? I distanced myself from her because I thought I'd cause trouble for her. I'm sure the reason I'm thinking this is because I care about Toto more than before. For a few days after the rumor came out, Toto and I didn't talk. He's going for a third year senior next! Are you serious? He doesn't stop! What are these rumors? People in high school really love to gossip. They don't do any harm, but I don't like how they make fun of things that aren't true. Well, they'll get tired of talking about me eventually, so I'm gonna stay quiet until things cool down. Just when I was thinking that... Hey, hey! Can I talk to you guys for a minute? Huh? Toto? Toto stood in front of the podium with a strong gaze, but her hands were trembling a little. What's going on all of a sudden? About Jiro. Jiro is not what everyone thinks he is. All the rumors are wrong. What? She choked on her words, but told them what happened. Then I asked my sister to play the role of my girlfriend because she kept getting involved with me. And that I'm not cheating, let alone making advances on anyone. Unexpectedly, Toto cleared up the misunderstanding. That's what it is. Oh, and um, Jiro is the person I like, so... If you say any more bad things about Jiro, I won't forgive you. Toto looked at me with an accomplished look on her face. Was it okay? Doing all that? Because it was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, but... From Toto's position... I'm a popular girl after all, you know. This kind of thing should be done by someone who has the power to communicate, right? But in reality, it was pretty scary. Your hands were shaking. Uh, he noticed. I've never been that drastic before. I've always been so passive. Going with what everyone else thought and did, I didn't really like myself like that. So I'm a little nervous about what people will think of me, but I feel better now. I see. Oh, um, that helped. Thanks. I guess you cared more about it than I thought. I thought you were someone who didn't seem to mind what people said about you. I'm a dry person when it comes to relationships, but there's no harm in being well-liked. I'd be concerned if they were hostile towards me. There's still so much I don't know about you. That's mutual, isn't it? Oh, what the heck. You know, I figured some things out, too. Huh? That I'm a kid who doesn't like green peppers? I did eat all your green peppers when we went to the family restaurant, now that I think about it. But that's not what I meant. I'm talking about my own feelings. I've never said this before in my life, and I don't know how to say it, but... I... I like you, Toto. What? You're too surprised. I wouldn't get involved with you that often if I wasn't attracted to you in the first place. I see. So you're finally going to be my boyfriend? W well, I guess so. Jiro! Hey! Uh, s sorry, I'm just so happy. <sighs> Promise me one more thing before we go out. What? Rely on me when you're in pain. I'll count on you if I'm having a hard time too. Uh, okay. I was a little annoyed, you know? You were avoiding me, so you wouldn't bother me, right? No more of that. Right, my bad. Help each other out, huh? Yeah, because, you know, we're a couple. Uh, right. Oh, Yujiro? Sis? Oh, from that time. Are you Yujiro's? That's right, I'm Yujiro's girlfriend. N no, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> You guys are going out now, huh? That's great, right, Yujiro? Y yeah. Our relationship was a cliche romance manga, as my sister said. Starting with a negative image and ending with a finale that tied us together. I am Kunihiko Miyajiri, 19 years old. I was born as the son of the priest of this Nanakuma shrine, and I'm currently majoring in Shinto at Kokugakuin University. I heard a new priestess will be joining us today. It's almost the Nanakuma festival after all. Nanakuma Shrine has a long history dating back to the Heian period. 
and the Nanakuma Festival is an important Shinto ritual that has been passed down from generation to generation. It requires manpower, as many people visit not only from the local area, but also from far and wide. She said she'd be here at 10. I should go to the shrine office soon. Ayumi used to come to help the shrine maiden until the year before last. Ayumi Shimizu is my childhood friend, and I thought we had a good relationship until she cut me off. When Ayumi and I were little, we used to play at the shrine. Ayuchan, let's go up on stage. Yeah! I can do cartwheels. Cool. You two! This is a sacred place to dedicate the dance to the gods, so get off! Yes! yes. In elementary school, we started practicing on stage to dance the children's dance at the Nanakuma Festival. You have to do it like this. Mm, I can't do it. It's okay. Let's do it together. Okay. Kunihiko, can you clean up the shrine? What? I don't want to. It's too much trouble. Your father, that's me, has to perform Shinto rituals, and your mother has to do paperwork at the shrine office. As a junior high school student, it became a chore to have to sweep the shrine early in the morning and help out. And I gradually came to dislike the fact that I was the son of a Shinto priest. Why is it just me? Everyone else is doing what they want. Morning, Kunichan. Ayumi, what's up? I'm going to morning practice with the volleyball team. We have a game coming up, so I thought I'd say a prayer for us to win. You're so strange. Even a shrine with a long history like ours is in a difficult business situation these days. The number of shrine parishioners has decreased significantly compared to the past. Not many people come to pray. Money offering is only tens of yen a day. And gifts at the shrine office don't sell very well. I don't want to live so poorly. I don't want to take over the shrine. After that, Ayumi and I went to the same high school and were in different classes in the first year. But in the second year, we were in the same class. I'm going to hand out the career choice questionnaires now. Don't think you still have time to relax because you're in the second grade. Think seriously about your life from now on. My life from now on, huh? Kuni-chan, you're going to Kokugakuen or Kogakukan to qualify for the priesthood, right? No. Junior college then? Or do you want to go to training school for priesthood? I'm not interested in becoming a priest. But why? That shrine is just old. The number of shrine parishioners is decreasing, and being a priest won't make me money. I want to enjoy my college life. I'm going to be a company employee. But it's an important shrine that has been preserved for generations since the Heian period. Usually there aren't many visitors, but people look forward to the festivals. Why do I have to be a priest just because I was born as the son of a priest? My life is my own. I have a choice. That's true, but... I mean, I don't care about that raggedy shrine. It doesn't make any money, so I'd much rather sell that land and build a mansion or something. Kunichan, you're awful! Ayumi... How can you say that about the shrine? I believed you loved Nanakuma Shrine and wanted to protect it. Ayumi... You're not a Shinto priest's kid. So you don't understand. I didn't actually think that. Ayumi was worried about the Nanakuma Shrine more than anyone. I knew that the most, and yet... I said that. I don't like you, Kuni-chan. We're not childhood friends anymore. Ayumi... I've been insulated from Ayumi. And even after I started studying for the priesthood at university, it's been awkward for the both of us. And we haven't been able to talk. I lost the opportunity and the timing. We were in different universities, so we're not going to see each other again. As I approached the shrine office, the new priestess had already arrived. What? Ayumi was there, and I couldn't help but shout. I came for you. <sighs> this is my chance. I have to apologize to Ayumi. Oh, uh... Oh, Ayumi-chan, you're here already. Oh, thank you for taking care of me, father. Perhaps because we've been family friends since childhood, Ayumi calls my dad father. I call him dad. Kunihiko, will you clean upstairs? What? Why? 
because Ayumi-chan is going to live with us while she works part-time as a priestess. Huh? It's closer to the university from here. No, no, no! Ayumi's house is next door! It's not that far away! She's also very eager to study for the priesthood. Ayumi's mom and dad are also supportive. I'm counting on you, Kunihiko. Are you serious? Living together after being cut off? The change is too sudden! Ayumi-chan, welcome! Oh, mother! Ayumi-chan didn't come last year, so I was wondering what would happen this year. But I'm glad you're here! Last year, I had exams and stuff, so... Right. Can I ask you to help? Yes! Ah, I completely missed the timing to apologize! After that, Ayumi was working as a priestess at the shrine office, and I was helping my father with the rituals and practicing for the Nanakuma festival. We didn't have a chance to talk, and night came. I can't go to Ayumi's room now. Maybe tomorrow. As I was changing my clothes while muttering that, I suddenly heard the sliding door of the room open. Can I come in? What? I'm in my underwear! And Ayumi's things are bare too! Hey, what's wrong? I hate how we're not talking to each other anymore. Ayumi! I know it's convenient for me after calling you awful, slapping you, and cutting you off, but... Ayumi, I'm sorry. Right. I can't expect you to forgive me. No, no, it's my fault. I was really stupid at that time. No wonder you slapped me and cut me off. Konichan. I was still lost after that. So I decided to go around to various shrines and talk to priests and junior priests. A junior priest is a position under the chief priest. Really? Some were born sons of priests and succeeded them, while others became interested in the priesthood after college or as adults. But what they all had in common was that they loved the shrine and wanted to carry it on. Yeah. And after researching the history of Nanakuma Shrine again, I came to think that this shrine should not be lost, and it made me realize that I want to protect it. I changed course at the last minute. I was so happy when I found out that Kunichan was going to study at Kokugaokun Shinto School. But I hit Kunichan at the time. I was afraid you might not forgive me, so I couldn't talk to you. Me too. I was afraid that you would hate me even more, so I didn't talk to you. I should have told you earlier. I'm sorry. No. And I'm sorry about this morning. I didn't mean to be so rough with you. Oh, it's okay. I know that when you're nervous, you tend to talk in a strong, angry way. Uh... Ayumi, will you be my childhood friend again? No. What? Are you still mad at me? I don't mean that. I don't want us to just be childhood friends anymore. I realize that I like you, Kunichan. Me too. I've been thinking about you all the time, Ayumi. And I realized how much you mean to me. Kunichan. Ayumi. We made up and went from childhood friends to lovers. Then came the Nanakuma Festival. A dance was performed on the stage. It brings back memories. We did it too. After that, the priestesses performed a shrine dance. Ayumi also danced. She's so beautiful. Kunihiko, will you help me with the prayer? Yes. And then, night came. I decided to dance the palace dance. Originally, my father, who is the chief priest, was supposed to dance. But he hurt his back, so it was decided that I would do it. Since I had made up my mind to take over the priesthood, I guess my father thought he should be in charge of it. Alright, let's go. That's the Nanakuma Festival. The good luck charms and raffles are selling and it's busy. We might not get to see the priests dance. Ayumi-chan, you can take a break. What? Don't you want to see Kunihiko's dance? Is that okay? Yeah, go on. Enjoy the couple's dance. C-couple? It still feels like a dream that Kunichan and I are a couple. I'm glad I had the courage to do a part-time job as a priestess. Oh, it's Kunichan. Wow. I was transfixed by the sacred and beautiful dance of Kunichan, who is now an adult and completely different from the children's dance. Hey, hey, isn't that young priest handsome? 
You're right. I'll take a video. I wonder if I can meet him if I come here. A handsome priest. That's nice. All the women and children and elderly were entranced by Kunichan's dance. H hey, Kunichan's my boyfriend. I'm glad I managed to dance without making a mistake. Excuse me? Are you a priest? No, I'm the son of a priest. I'm not a priest yet. So, you're going to take over this place eventually, right? Can I meet you here? Huh? What's going on? Kunichan came! What? Ayumi! I can't believe you were surrounded by women as soon as the palace dance finished. What was that all about? Because you're too good looking, Kunichan. What? Look at this! The palace dance that Kunichan danced was on TikTok! What? It says the good looking priest is beautiful? That's so embarrassing! I'm not even a priest! We just became a couple and I have rivals already. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're so cute and I'm so happy. I'm being serious. Don't worry. You're the only one for me, Ayumi. Kunichan. Ayumi, not only do I want to protect this shrine, but I want it to be loved by many people. Will you stay by my side and support me? Of course. Thanks, Ayumi. I love you. Kunichan, I love you too. Ah, a handsome, handsome priest and a cute priestess couple. They're so good together. Uh, let's go. Yeah. My childhood friend who cut me off because she thought about me. We've been stuck for a long time because we were afraid of being disliked by each other. But we realized how much we like each other because we were apart. I want to make Nanakuma Shrine prosperous together with Ayumi, from now on. The Nanakuma amulets and Nanakuma paper fortunes I came up with selling and boosting the profits of Nanakuma Shrine, which had been in the red, to a new level, is for another story. Let's go! Yeah! <sighs> Ryomakun is cool! They're overreacting with one shot. I'm Ryoma Sendo, a first-year high school student who's in the basketball club. I've been popular like this ever since I was born. Not just because of my good looks, either. I'm getting good grades, and I'm the most promising rookie on the basketball team. In other words, I'm living a high school life that all the boys in the world envy. Ryoma-kun, good morning! I saw your practice today. You were so cool. <laughs> thanks. Of course, I'm popular off the court as well. Crowds gather around me every day. S Sarasan, let's go to the kiosk. Yeah. Good morning, Ryoma. Ah, oh, good morning, Moina. You're the coolest guy in the world today, too. Don't tell me an obvious fact. <laughs> it doesn't sound obnoxious when you say it, Soma. Hey, hey, I'll be waiting for you after practice today. So, after club activities... Uh... You know... You should ask someone else to do this kind of heavy lifting for you. Th thanks but I'm on day duty. If you can't count on anyone else, just call me. O okay. Wait, you don't look so good. No, I'm fine. I've just been a little busy lately. I mean, you're being too protective. Oh, uh, my bad. She's Chika Uchida. She's my classmate and manager of the basketball team. I'm attracted to her because she's serious and hardworking. Chika comes to practice earlier than anyone else and does all the chores every day. She cheers loudly with her small body and gets more frustrated than the players when the team loses. I've never seen anyone as dedicated and responsible as she is. And she may look plain at first glance, but she has big bright eyes you can see through her glasses, has snow white skin, and silky hair. If she were polished, She'd be more beautiful than anyone else in this school. In other words, I'm deeply in love with her. But I can't tell her how I feel about her. Chika, you have day duty after school, right? I'll help you. So let's go to club activities together. Okay. Hmm. Thanks for helping me clean, Chika. Now the room's spotless. Yeah, I'm glad. But they left you with the cleaning all by yourself again. I don't mind. I'm rather lucky. What? 
because I got to be with Chica alone. Uh, no, it's nothing. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wanna wear this? But, Ryomakun. I'm gonna practice by myself and sweat again, so it's fine. Just give it back to me tomorrow. I see. Thanks. You've been pushing yourself too hard lately, so get some rest. In the meantime, don't catch a cold. I'll be back at the court, so be careful on your way home. Yeah, thanks. Don't push yourself too much too, Ryomakun. Yeah. Hmm? What's going on? When I got to school, there was a lot of noise in the classroom, and I had a bad feeling, so I peeked inside. That's... Could it be? This? It's Ryomakuns. They're in the same club, so maybe they're dating? What? No! I can't believe this is happening because I lent her my jacket yesterday. Hey, Uchida-san. Yes? You're getting too cocky just because you're in the same club. That isn't my intention. You and Ryoma live in different worlds. A plain girl like you doesn't deserve to be by Ryoma's side. What he deserves is a glamorous girl like me. And I've known Ryoma since middle school. I'm someone Uchida-san could never be. Don't you guys think so too? Uh, um... <laughs> that may be true. You're not even. Moina, that's enough! R Ryoma... I gave Chika that jacket because she didn't look well. I didn't want her to catch a cold. I see. Chika takes the initiative to do things that people don't want to do every day. She's a hard-working manager. It's not nice to be sarcastic with Chika like that. As your friend, please, stop attacking Chika. Friends, huh? Oh yeah, the advisor called. Chika, come here. What? Hey! Um, thanks for what you said earlier. You don't have to thank me. I mean, I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. What? Why are you apologizing, Ryoma-kun? I've known about Moina's feelings for a long time. But I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I've been vague. Which made you feel bad, Chika. I'm fine. But Moina's not a bad person. Please forgive her. Yeah, I can understand that. I brought this all on myself. Yeah, I shouldn't go on like this. I'm gonna hurt her instead. By the way, don't you like Sarah-san, Ryoma-kun? I do. As a friend. My feelings are towards someone else. I see. I wish I could say it's Chika, who's in front of me right now. <laughs> I knew Ryoma-kun even though we went to different middle schools. There was my grandfather's house near the middle school Ryoma-kun went to, and I used to play there. Every time I passed by there, I always saw him fighting alone. I was also on the basketball team in middle school, so at first I remember watching him and thinking, he's so good. One day, when I was injured and couldn't compete in the last tournament, I came here because I kind of wanted to see him. You come here often, don't you? Y you noticed? It's obvious. You play basketball too? Yeah, but... I told him about my injuries. What am I doing telling him about this? I must have made him feel uncomfortable. Let's have the last tournament here then. Huh? But I'm hurt. You can at least make free throws, right? Beat me, and get rid of your disappointment. He laughed when he said that. I felt like I could see a little of his hardship behind that smile. I'm sure this guy looks forward and laughs through the hard times. I ended up losing the match miserably. He played his best despite playing against a girl. The score was a wreck, but I felt my heart was saved. Ryoma Kun hasn't changed since then. I'll be noticed again like before. I have to go home. <laughs> Stalker. Sarasan? Well, I guess I'm the same. I was out of line the other day. I don't mind, so it's okay. Ryoma told me he liked me that day. What? As a friend. He said he couldn't see me as a girl and he apologized to me. I, I see. He said he likes someone else. I wonder who. Huh? I take back my apology. Uchida-san, you really annoy me. Well, I'm going home. You should go home before you catch a cold, too. You'll get Ryoma in trouble. Y yeah. What was that Sarasan just now? Hmm? Where is it? Hey, hey, rookie! Don't lose your tools! 
You can't play sports with just your sense! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll find it soon and get back to practice. Ah, uh, it's probably them. I'm not well liked by my team members, including my seniors. That's because I've got a lot of things going for me. I'm a good student, I'm a good basketball player, and I'm popular with the girls. I've had these experiences for a long time, but they're hitting the hardest now. I'm sure it's because I was chosen to start the next tournament as a freshman. For the seniors who dropped out of the starting lineup because I joined the team, they don't want to lose their regular spots to such a junior. In general, basketball's not so sweet that you can become good just by having a good sense of the game. I've worked a hundred times harder than these guys, which lets me perform even as a first year. But saying this will only have the opposite effect. I came up with a peaceful solution. Ryoma-kun. Oh my bad! I hit him a little too hard because it's a real game! You injured? I'm okay. Seniors, please be careful with fouls. If you get sent off, it'll be a big loss. Uh, yeah. Duh. Your knee, it's scraped. Ah, uh, I forget the pain in my legs and the harassment of the seniors when I see her face so close to me. The power of love is amazing. I'm fine. Thanks, Chica. Hey. <sighs> As the tournament got closer, the environment around me got worse. I was unreasonably forced to clean, they hid my things, I was hit during practice. I gave up on peaceful solutions, and decided to confront the seniors head on. You say it's sense, but I'm working harder than anyone else. If you don't like the fact that I'm a freshman playing as a starter, why don't you seniors work harder? Don't talk big to me! You're first year! You're looking down on us, aren't you? You just try to get the girls to like you saying you're working hard. It's all about sense, after all. <sighs> this is useless. No matter what I say, nobody likes my very existence. So it doesn't matter how many good arguments I give them. I was about to abandon the discussion. But then... Um... Chica? Th that's enough, everyone. Please stop. Having girls on your side like that annoys me! Of course I'm going to be on his side. I became a manager to support Ryoma-kun. What? He's different. He only thinks about basketball. He doesn't look down on his seniors. He says, I learn a lot from Mayama Senpai's threes. Takianagi Senpai's passes are good, so we are able to score points. He respects and learns from his seniors and works hard. Uh, I see. Uh, but... Huh? What's the trouble? It sounded like someone was trying to hurt a fragile freshman. Isn't that bad? Don't you guys think so? Yeah, it's not a good idea. Should I call a teacher? Uh, never mind. We were just having a bit of a difficult conversation. Uh, let's go. Sarasan? I just wanted to socially eliminate those guys. Oh, it's not like I was trying to help Uchida-san. Ryoma hasn't been well lately. I just wanted to get rid of the bugs that are dragging Ryoma down. See you later. Mona! Thanks! Y yeah <sighs> Oh my god. Doing something you're not used to. I was really scared. I've never given an opinion to my seniors before in my life. I hope I didn't add fuel to the fire. Is it going to be okay? I don't know. I honestly don't know what's gonna happen. But thanks to you, I feel better. That's enough. Thank you, Chica, for being brave enough to protect me. No, my body just moved on its own. <sighs> I'm going back. Hey, Chica, did you say you became a manager to support me earlier? Oh, yeah. That's right. When Ryoma-kun cheered me up that day, I found a purpose. What? She told me a story about that day in the third grade of middle school, when I made free throws with a girl who looked as if she was despaired of this world. That... was you, Chica? Y yeah It's no surprise you didn't recognize me. My hair's totally different, too. I see. That was you, huh? Why are you smiling so much? I'm happy. Knowing that I met you before... What? Chica told me I supported her and cheered her up. So she wanted to return the favor next. But it's already been returned enough. I was given courage. I felt like I needed to say it now! 
I like you, Chica. Huh? I've wanted to say it for a long time, but I couldn't. I like you, because you work so hard at everything you do. But I'm not good enough for Ryoma-kun. What are you talking about? Hey... I know you're prettier than anyone in the school. Th that's not true. Sorry, I was trying to be cool. Anyway, just give me a reply. I like you too, Ryoma-kun. From now on, I want to support Ryoma-kun not only as a manager, but also as a girlfriend. Uh, I see. Y yeah. I don't know if the dispute with the seniors will be resolved yet. But I think I can handle it now. Because the person I love gave me strength. Hey, Sendo? About last time. Did something happen? What? I just want to play basketball with the seniors as long as possible. So I'll keep doing my best. When you're in a club, you're bound to have a little bit of an altercation or two. Sorry. No apology necessary. Why don't you try to steal the ball from me? Dad, you cocky junior! Let's go! Ryoma, go for it. Uh, my voice is still louder than yours, Uchida-san. I'm louder. Let's go! Let's go! I think my daily life has changed, and I grew. I made peace with my seniors, faced Moina's feelings head-on, and expressed my feelings to Chika. I'm sure there'll probably be more disputes in the future, and I'll probably get stuck in the middle of things. It's in times like these that I'll look forward in my own way. When I can't look forward by my own strength, I'll rely on my friends who aim high together, my precious friends, and my beloved girlfriend. I'm now Tokase, a dull freshman in, in a dull high school. Kana, nice shot. Yay. She's cute today too. I have feelings for Kana Furuhashi. She's in my class and the Madonna of the school, but I'm a dull high school student with no interesting traits. I can only stare at her from a distance every day. Hey, Kase! Huh? Oh! Uh... Are you okay? What? For Hashi-san? Uh, how come? What do you mean? I'm a health committee member. I was worried when you fainted. But Hashi-san's so kind after all. Uh, I'm fine now. Thanks. No, I'm still gonna be here. What? What's going on? Don't tell me she's gonna stay because she's worried about me. Right. It's not possible for such a sweet development. It's like a miracle that we're alone together like this, even though it's the committee member's job. My feelings for her are growing by the day, even though I'd given up on her. One day, when I was feeling foggy... Err... Uh... What? On my way out of school, I realized I'd forgotten something, so I went back to school. I walked into the classroom, and there was Furuhashi-san lying on her desk, crying. What happened? No, now is not the time to think. Furuhashi-san? She didn't respond. I called out to her, undeterred. Uh, oh, it's Kase. Uh, are you okay? Leave me alone. No, I can't do that. It's none of your business, Kase. Well, I wish I could say something witty here. Hang in there. The girl I like is crying right in front of me. I think that, but as long as I don't know the cause, saying unnecessary words might have the opposite effect. What should I do? I probably used my head more than any other time in my life, but I couldn't come up with an answer. But I couldn't do the heartless thing and walk away, so I stopped there, flustered. Uh, um... You're so persistent! I told you to leave me alone already! Wait! Huh? I wonder if I was imagining things. Yeah, I hope I was. If what I just saw was true, it's pretty serious. I hope it's just a mundane reason, like the teacher got mad at her or boyfriend dumped her or something. I prayed so. It's been three days since I saw her cry. She hasn't come to school. I wonder if she's okay. Hey, Kase! Yes? I need you to deliver this to the Furuhashi residence. What? Me? You're on day duty. I'm counting on you. Y yes Hello? Um... My name is now Tokase. We're in the same class. I've come to give Kana-san the documents the teacher told me to hand. Kana, your friend from class is here. I'm sorry, she can't come out with reason. It's no problem. Can I just ask for one thing? Please tell her it's going to be okay. I'll come back if I have something to hand her. Thanks. Maybe I wasn't mistaken about what I saw that time. If that's the case, she must be in a lot of pain right now. 
I don't know if it's going to be okay are the right words to say to her, but I felt stronger that I wanted to encourage her somehow. Thanks for everything. No, it's my job. She didn't come to school after that. I took it upon myself to deliver the errands because it was my way home. I needed a reason to come to her house. Is Kana-san okay? I think it's still hard now, but I'll accept her no matter what. Uh, please don't tell Kana-san that, okay? Then I continued to go to her house and a week passed. She said you can come inside today. But... Kana's calling you. What? I was shown to her room. It... It's been a while. Er... Are you eating? Yeah. Getting sleep? Yeah. She has her back turned to me while she answers. This is going to go on if I don't do anything. So I stepped in and talked to her, prepared for her to dislike me. You burned your face, right? Yeah. She says in a despairing tone. After a moment of silence, she turns to me. Furuhashi san. Uh, she let out what she had been holding in for the past week. I can't walk outside like this. I just started high school. There's no way this is okay. <laughs> she was ironing alone in the home economics room. And then she slipped and fell on the wet floor. The iron she was holding hit her in the face and burned her left cheek. I see. I can understand how you feel. There's no way you would understand. Stop trying to act nice. It's irresponsible to say it's going to be okay or that you understand how I feel. Uh... Wait, what are you doing? Look. What? When I was in elementary school, I got burned by a kettle of hot water. So I understand how you feel. Well, it's not exactly the same, since there are differences in gender and the power of the body burned. Sorry. Why are you apologizing? You were so nice to me, and I said such terrible things. It's not unreasonable. You didn't know about my burns. I worried about it a lot. And besides, I was in elementary school, so I was old enough to be sensitive to differences in appearance. So I couldn't help but notice how people looked at me. I even lashed out at my parents. But around junior high school, I thought about it. I wasn't the only one in pain. My mother cried every time she saw my scars. My dad would always say positive things to cheer me up, even though he was probably exhausted from work. These scars are etched with the sadness, regret, and anguish of the people I love. So I decided to carry that with me and try to stay positive. Besides, with the current medical advances, even if it can't be erased, it can be made less noticeable. There's hope for that too. Yeah, that's true. It was my fault to begin with, so I can't keep dragging it out. I'll talk to my mom about it today. Yeah, I think that would be good. I don't think you'll completely get over it, but you can make progress. I'll help you where I can, as a fellow burn survivor. I'm glad she understood, even if only a little. Seeing her smile for the first time in a while relieved me from the bottom of my heart. Then every time I went to her house, we talked in her room. Even on days I didn't have any errands for, I'd go to her house. Day by day, I'd see her smile more often, and I'm as happy to see it as if it were my own. I like her, but more than anything, as someone who's been through the same pain. See you tomorrow then. Wait. Hmm? Well, what's wrong? I'm going to go to school. What? I know I can't go on like this. Since you're trying to cheer me up, I have to answer. You're strong, furuhashi san I didn't go to school for about a month in elementary school. Not at all. I'm rather glad. What? I'll pick you up tomorrow around 7.30. Okay. H hey. What? Can I hold your hand? I'm worried. You're already holding it, though. Er. If someone sees you holding my hand, it'll be trouble. If you're worried about people around you, you shouldn't hold my hand. No. No. Holding hands is fine. If anything, I want to. What? Because of this face. Ah. You're worried about other people. Yeah. I was too at first. Summer's the worst. I had to wear long sleeves to hide the burns. I mean, I'm still hiding it though. Hey Kase, thank you so much. I think you're the only person in the world who would go this far for me. That's an exaggeration. I wanted to make this burn on my left hand meaningful. I wanted to encourage you, even if just a little. Besides... Besides? Oh no, it's nothing. Don't get carried away just because we're getting closer. I almost let my feelings for her slip out. She's deeply hurt and finally taking a step forward. I can't do anything that would put a damper on such a courageous act of hers. We're almost at school. Yeah. It's going to be okay. I'm not really good at smiling, but I smiled as much as I could. I wanted to take some of her worries away. M morning. Kana, what happened? You didn't come to school for over a week. Were you sick? Wait, your face. 
<laughs> I got a little burn. Whoa, the Madonna's beautiful face! You idiot! You're too loud! The class buzzed at the sight of Furuhashi-san's face. Some interested, some looking at her with pity, some averting their gazes. Fortunately, no one made fun of her, but these reactions can still be hurtful. Turning to Furuhashi-san, she has a forced smile on her face and says she's about to start crying. I told her it's going to be okay. Then I had to take action. It's hot these days, isn't it? What? Kase? What happened? <laughs> I actually got burned a long time ago. Uh, how is it? Isn't it cool like a warrior's badge? I have a much larger burn than her. Although the size of the burns is not something to compare, it would be a little comforting to stand in public with someone who has more prominent scar than her. Why? Don't worry. You're not alone, Furuhashi-san. My burns made my parents, grandparents, and some of my friends sad. But from now on, I want this to be something that saves someone. Kase, thank you. She then gradually regained her energy, and I feel like she's becoming brighter than she was before the burn. Her friends around her also seem to be treating her the same as before. I also have more people I can talk to now that I've opened up about my own burns. I don't think I was worried about the burns, but maybe I was subconsciously being dark. Her and I became really close, enough to see each other on our days off. Today, we went to the library to study for our exams together. Uh, um, you don't have to walk me. I feel bad. Oh, Naoto, what a pretty young lady, isn't she? M mom I'm so moved, I'm almost in tears. I can't believe you're with such a pretty girl, Naoto. No, this is... H hello Hello, wanna come over? Have some tea. Uh, Mom? Yes, I'd love to. What? Uh, the unexpected sudden turn of events had me flustered. This is the first time a girl is coming over. Uh, this was going to happen. I want to clean my room. Hey, what do you mean you accept me no matter what? What? But a Hashi-san's mom told her. Th that's... I tried desperately to think of something to cover it up, but nothing came up. It seems there's no turning back now. Suddenly, I think back to my days with her. I've seen her do a lot of brave things in the last few weeks. If she and I are equals, I have to be courageous too. I can't be a weak, dull high school student forever. I fell in love with you at first sight when I first enrolled. What? Oh, sorry for surprising you. What are you apologizing for? You've come this far, there's no turning back now! Hey. What? Uh, for Hashi-san? Uh. Uh, look at my face closely. Um, are you sure? Y yeah. I want you, Furuhashi-san. I like the bright and gentle Furuhashi-san. I like the courageous Furuhashi-san. I like you, Furuhashi-san. With a burn like this? I said I'd accept any kind of Furuhashi-san. But I don't like such a weak Furuhashi-san. Even with a handicap like a burn, Furuhashi-san is the most beautiful person I know. It's the first time in my life I made my insecurities public in front of my classmate. Or asking out a girl I like. But Hashi-san said I gave her a lot of courage, but she gave me just as much, or maybe even more. All right, finish up today's Kura. My name is Ryohei Nakagawa. I'm 25 and I'm on my computer this early because I'm playing games. I finally met my Kura after staying awake all night, so it's time to go to sleep for me. Most people are waking up to go to work, but I've just been living life at home. Wow, you're playing games again? Oh, hey, Mai. Good night. Or I guess good morning to you. The girl that just came into my room without any hesitation was my sister, Mai. We aren't related. Technically, we're step siblings. We met each other when I was 15 and she was 13. Our parents married each other and she suddenly showed up in my life. Maybe it's because she was really busy or her age, but she had kept her distance from me. She was cute, so I wish I could be more like siblings, but... I guess it's pretty tough to just accept you have a brother now. You're disgusting. You should get a job. Still treating me kind of mean, huh? That happened a few years ago. When I graduated college, I didn't find a job or anything. I just stayed at home. You don't have to say I'm disgusting. I'm working hard too. 
there's no point unless you get results. I don't know, and I don't care about you. M my Whatever. This is how it always works. I'm just gonna go to bed. I went under my futon and let out a huge sigh. There was something I wanted to do too, but I just couldn't find the courage to do it. That night... I'm home. Welcome home. I've cooked dinner for you. You want to shower first? Eat first. My parents are currently away overseas, so it's just us at home. Obviously, that means we're the ones that are taking care of the house. Thanks. So good. Hmm? What did you say? Nothing, you stupid jobless brother. Jeez. Talk about not making any sense. You're lucky that our parents own this house, but you realize that you're never going to find anyone. You're going to be alone forever. Are you okay with that? I don't want to die alone, but... No excuses. There's a bunch of local jobs, so look. Is this a freaking dictionary? How am I supposed to look through all of this? I'll look later, so just leave it there. Do you want to find a job or not? S sorry I understood why she was so interested in me finding a job. I'm sure she wouldn't want me to stay a shut-in forever. <sighs> she had a brother or sister that wasn't jobless. I don't know what you want me to say. Please, Dad. Mom, I don't want much, but just give me a sister. They're not dead yet. Someone that actually works is actually kind. We'll go shopping with me, we'll share their clothes, we'll go to fancy cafes and feed me. I want a sister like that. That's a pretty tall order. Crap, I need to go back to my room. You should take a shower and go to sleep. You stay up late too? I'm fine. This is where the game really starts. Yeah, yeah, you mean literally gaming. Must be nice being jobless. <laughs> she walked away stomping the ground and I felt so guilty. My existence probably really annoyed her. I do things around the house to try to help, but it's not enough. I need to be able to help out more. I mean, I should just find a job, really. But I wouldn't be like this if I could just move into action. I just played games as usual. I spent most of my time in front of my computer and staying awake till early in the morning before going to bed. And I would rinse and repeat. I would go buy groceries, so I didn't need to leave the house. I made the perfect stew. I'm so excited for tonight. I'm sure she'll be really excited. She might even cry. Wait, she's already home? Ryohi? Huh? You're already crying? Did you spell it? Did you tell good it tastes? I was fired. What do I do? Whoa, what? It wasn't time to cook right now. I had to listen to what happened. Apparently last year, AI became so advanced that her company started introducing it. It was cutting back some jobs. Mai was hired as a regular office worker, so she was cut first. You're still young, so you can find a new job easily, they said. How's that got anything to do with it? I was able to finally find a job and start really getting into it. You'll find a new job, don't worry. But then AI is going to take my job again. Then it's starting from scratch all over again. I don't want to do this. You don't need to worry. You might be able to find a better job. Just move on from the old job. Don't want to hear it from you, because you're always at home anyway. It was like I got smacked in the back of my head. She was absolutely right. It didn't matter what I said, it wouldn't really be convincing. I worked hard for her, but these words rung hollow. I made a decision. I was afraid, so I couldn't give it my all, but I was going to do something. I can't not do anything when my own sister is struggling like this. Fine, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Huh? Just wait here. Huh? That outfit. I guess it's time to give it my all. Ryohi? I'm going to start my own company. You're going to be my employee. Huh? What do you mean? I was afraid, so I couldn't really start it. But I figured that I would start my own company eventually. I loved making my own games from when I was in college, so I went to a gaming company for an internship. What was waiting for me was a lot of twisted office politics and a horrible work environment. It was literally hell on earth, and I was afraid to find a job. I graduated college without finding a place of employment and continued working as a freelance game system engineer. Many overseas game companies contracted out to me, so there was a pretty bad jet lag. I had a wonderful sleep schedule thanks to that. So, you were playing games this whole time because of work? Yeah, I had to keep checking if there were any bugs. What the hell? So you weren't jobless? But I kept making fun of you. 
Why didn't you say anything? Because it's pretty much the same thing, you know? No, it's not. You're such an idiot. What do you mean you're going to start your own company? Well, I was thinking about it this whole time. Dad even suggested I do it. But I was worried if I could run a company or start something that ends up like that horrible game company I entered at. But if you're in need of help, then that's a different story. I'm going to make a place that you can keep working, so don't worry. You got over your trauma for me? I knew I couldn't stay like this forever, so now is the time to stand up. All right, time to strike while the iron's hot. Things move fast after that. I was actually getting things ready even though I couldn't find the bravery to actually take a step forward. I started with the paperwork and made my systems company to hire mine. I had quite a few clients from my freelance days, so I started using my connections to find work. They told their friends about my company and I was able to be really busy. Whew! It's been so long. I'm a little tired, but... <laughs> what? Nothing. I just thought you were jobless this whole time, but you were actually working hard at home. After seeing how hard you work now, I can't say that you don't work hard at all. I'm glad you believe me. It's my fault for not saying anything anyway. Yeah, I can't believe you hid that from me. Make sure you tell me from now on, CEO. <laughs> it's just the two of us in the company, though. I can tell that after spending time working with her, her attitude has definitely changed. Her cold gaze was no longer all that I got from her. Maybe she's finally found her kindness for me. Then one day, I was off that day, but Mai was looking at me with joy in her eyes. What are you grinning for? Excuse you, this beautiful girl is looking at you and you can't just be happy? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Come on, you could at least deny a little bit. But you really are cute, so... Ugh, don't be weird. Anyway, are you free tonight? Night? Yeah, I'm free. Really? I'm so glad. Would you want to go eat together? I got my first paycheck from your company. Huh? It's cool. I'll just cook. No, tonight. And dress up. Meet me in front of the station at 4 p.m. Wait, why are we going to meet up when we both live here? Sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, uh, you pass. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. You look cute too. Really? <laughs> She's really cute. I've never seen her this cute. Mayan made reservations for the store and we headed there right away. The store was clearly fancy and I wasn't sure if I had any right being there, but... Don't worry. There's no dress code and it's a lot more casual than it looks. Come on, let's go. She dragged me inside and I couldn't shake her off. I just walked inside. After we went inside, I found it really was more casual than I thought. But it was still pretty fancy and I felt a little out of place. <laughs> it's like a rented suit. I'm not good with stores like these. Let's get used to it then. Yeah, take it easy, please. I was pretty nervous at first, but the more food came out, the more I relaxed because of how incredible the food tasted. I completely forgot about my nerves and was so happy about how good the food was. It's so good. It's been so long since I've eaten out. It's that good? Thank you for taking me out to a store like this, Mai. We could come again, no worries. But still, that much? Want me to go get the chef? I've always wanted to get the chef to say the food was seriously the best on the planet. Is today the day? <laughs> Please don't! I laughed with Mai for the first time in a long time. Was it before I shut myself in? Or was it even before then? Whatever the case, I don't remember her being this happy. That's why when I saw her this beautiful and grown, my heart was beating a million miles an hour. Calm down, man. She's still my sister. You can't be like this. Ugh, it was so good. Your cooking is good too, but it's nice to go out sometimes. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea to keep finding new places, huh? That sounds like fun! Hey, Ryoi. Hmm? What's up? Um... Sorry for how mean and rude I've always been towards you. Huh? You don't have to apologize! I didn't say anything, and if you thought I was jobless, I don't blame you for treating me that way. No, it was wrong. Should have figured things out with you. I wanted you to be the brother that could do anything and figure anything out. I was being selfish. But you hadn't changed. You were always the same badass brother. Finally realized. I'm so sorry. For the first time, I heard how she really felt. 
I always thought she just didn't like me, but it wasn't like that. I really made her worry about me. I'm really sorry that I didn't tell you sooner. This time, I'll tell you more... You don't understand. Huh? I don't like you as a brother. I like you as a man. Huh? Is that why she's all dressed up like this today? She thinks it's a date? Big brother. No, Ryoikun. Am I not good enough? You can't see me as anything more than a sister? No, um... I just didn't say anything, but... I really did think you were cute. Honestly, I always thought of you as a woman. Really? But you've always treated me like a child. Because I felt like I couldn't keep our relationship as siblings unless I did. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's so nice. I've always liked you. Oh, wow. Yay! So now we're a mom and pop store. Whoa, we're not married yet. But you're a young entrepreneur. I need to hurry up and marry you or someone is going to take you from me. That's not going to happen. I want to spend my days with you because there's no one else. I wouldn't find someone else now. <laughs> That's so nice to hear. That's how we completely shifted gears. I became a boyfriend instead of a brother. We reported back to our parents and they were happy to hear. They were even talking about paying for our wedding. Maybe we'll blow past the dating stages soon. My name is Shogo Teratani. An ordinary man who works at a construction site. Every day I work hard and sweat to earn money at the site. You can take a break now. Thank you. I can't say I have a good job, but with no education, I don't have much of a choice. Looking back at my past self, I'm surprised I'm still working hard like this. When I was a student, I was what you might call delinquent. I rebelled against my father's strict educational standards and didn't go to school and just played around. Because of that, my father began to shun me as a member of the family. The relationship between parent and son at home only grew colder and colder. But my mom was the one person who wouldn't give up on me. Can you come home a little earlier? I'm worried about you, you know? Shut up, you old hag! I didn't ask you to worry about me! As a parent, of course I'd be worried about my child. Dinner is ready. Have some. No matter how late I got home, my mom was always waiting for me. She'd prepare a meal she didn't even know if I'd eat and welcome me home. She was always showing me kindness, and all I would do was rebel with my foul mouth. But then one day, that normal everyday life suddenly fell apart. Mom fell ill and passed away. In the blink of an eye, she disappeared from my life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was so sorry that I could never see her again without being able to express even a single word of gratitude for the love she showed me. My mother smiling serenely in her portrait. What am I doing? You're disowned. You have nothing to do with this house. Now go wherever you want. Seemed like the bill for all I had done had finally come due. He kicked me out shortly after, as if to get rid of me. I think my father always wanted to do this with me. I think it was my mom secretly protecting me from my father. I can't believe I didn't notice anything. After I got kicked out of my house, I moved from one friend's house to another, looking for work so I could survive. I had no education, no job options, and dormitory jobs were even harder to come by. I had to persevere. I ended up getting the job at my current company when I was 17. I've been working every day ever since then. Wait, someone's already here. I've been coming here on my lunch break lately. No one's around and it's cool and quiet in the shade. I like it because it feels like time is passing by in a peaceful way. I don't mind talking to other people, but sometimes I just want to be alone. So I've created this favorite place for myself. It was a girl. What? I just came to my favorite spot on my break from work and was a little surprised to see someone I've never seen before. Sorry if I startled you. Uh, you hungry? Uh, the girl who calls herself Ayane devours the lunch. I don't know where she came from, but she's dressed like this, so she probably hasn't had a decent meal in a while. Hey, what are you doing here? I ran away from home. My dad and I don't get along. For a moment, I felt a twinge of hurt inside me. It was as if I was looking at myself back then, and I guess I didn't feel like a stranger somehow. Well, a lot happens in life. Hey, are you always here? Not until we're done with this site. Will I see you again? Yeah, if I come here. Then I spent every day with her for the next three weeks until the field job was over. Ayane would always come here when it was my break time. I don't know how she spends the rest of her time, but she never seems to go home. But I didn't really want to pry into it. And the last day of field work. Today's the last day of work here. It's unfortunate, but we won't be able to eat together anymore. I won't be able to see you anymore? The next job site is quite a distance from here. How's it going? You ready to go home? They're in touch with you, aren't they? 
That's proof that they care about you. <laughs> Among her few possessions, Ayane had a smartphone. If it's something her parents are paying for, it didn't seem like they didn't care about their daughter. Ever since I've been involved with Ayane, the runaway girl for the past few weeks, I've become very attached to her. I gave Ayane all the money I had in my wallet. You know what? Take this money and go to a manga cafe or whatever. Take a bath, buy some stuff. And when you're clean, have another talk with your father. If you can't understand each other, that's fine, but if you end up regretting it, it'll be too late. I don't want you to end up like me. Why? You don't even know who I am. Why are you being so nice to me? If I were a bad person, I might spend the money, you know? Even if you do, that money's yours now, so I can't say anything. It's just my ego that I want you to spend it this way. I just want you to be happy. I won't forget this, Shogo. After that day, there was no more contact between me and Ayane. I felt lonely, but somewhere in my heart, I still cared about Ayane. I wonder if she went home after that. I think about it, but I know I'll never hear her answer. I only prayed that she wouldn't regret it like I did. Six months after I stopped seeing Ayane, I happened to hit a job near the elevated area where I met her again. When I come here, I can't help but think of Ayane. It was like I was feeding her. If I could support her even a little. I thought that, but I was probably the one looking forward to meeting Ayane most. You're finally back. It was my father's company that hired me to do this work, and I asked them to do it because I knew you would come here again. A familiar voice startled me, and I turned to see Ayane standing there, dressed in a luxurious suit. Ayane? How? Ayane, who used to be a runaway, was actually the daughter of the president of a famous company. She made peace with her father and is now working for the company. So you called me here to see me again? I asked Ayane, and she nodded with a smile. Everything was a reunion arranged by Ayane. I wanted to thank you. Shogo told me to go home, and I did, you know? I had a good talk with my father, and we were able to resolve our misunderstanding. I'm sure if Shogo hadn't said those things, I still wouldn't have gone home. I'm glad you made it back. But still, I didn't know you came from such a family. I'm embarrassed that I gave you a sermon like a big shot with my low income. About that, I'm going to ask you to quit your job as of today, Shogo. <laughs> what?! If I quit my job, I'll lose my house. Why do I have to quit in the first place? I couldn't hide my surprise at being fired all of a sudden. Did I do something wrong during the construction? I want you to come with me. I don't want to leave you any longer. Even if you stay together, if I lose my job, I'm going to lose my house, you know? I know, so I'm also preparing for that. I'm trying to make a long-winded offer to get married with me. Whoa, what are you talking about? I've been lonely for a few months since I didn't see Ayane. I never imagined her seeing me as a romantic interest. Isn't she younger than me in the first place? And to ask straight for a marriage? Does your father know about this? Of course. The reason we fought was because he was about to force me into a marriage without regard to my feelings. I told him that if I was going to get married, I wanted to marry someone I choose, so don't worry. Even if that's the case, I'm not ready to get married. Ayane's father wouldn't be fine with just anyone as her marriage partner either. I wonder if he would accept someone like me. If you bring a guy like me with no money and no job, your father's going to faint. There's a lot of jobs and ways to make money if you look for them. It was you who made me realize that the important thing is not that, you know? You were so kind to me when I didn't know any better. I'm, I was glad that you looked at me for who I was disregarding social titles. So I want to cherish that feeling I felt. Please, stay by my side. Man... You're a handful. I was a handful from the beginning, wasn't I? I smile as if I gave up to Ayane, who didn't seem to take offense. Then we got into a relationship as fiancés. I was nervous that I'd be turned away, but I guess her father liked me for who I was inside, and he took me in rather easily. Ayane is smiling more happily now that her father approved. I was asked by Ayane and changed jobs to the same company. I got a better job than when I was a field worker, and my life changed a lot. The president and Ayane also arranged a house for me, and I can only thank them for that. I'm a bit overwhelmed by the new environment, but I'm making efforts every day to adapt to it. I want to repay the president for the special care he gives me by achieving results at work as soon as possible. I met her by chance, and I never dreamed that I'd be asked to get married by a younger woman like this. I just didn't want her to feel the same way I did. I was involved with Ayane with that one thought in mind. Something must have touched her heart as well. I was able to be close to her because of the quiet love my mother gave me. If I had noticed that, I'd probably still be a wreck. I'm going to live the rest of my life in my own way to the fullest 
so I can make my mother proud. With the love of my life whom I met. Hello! Thank you so much for watching! I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you all next time.